has a theme. A theme that is at the very heart of bhakti. In the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, there's a very, very precious verse that is spoken by Krishna. This verse gives unlimited hope and through that hope, courage and inspiration for everyone. Whoever we are, wherever we're from, whatever we've done or not done, whatever our qualification or disqualification, it gives us not only the hope, but the means by which we can actually connect to the highest wealth in all of existence, the wealth within ourselves, the grace of God or Krishna. The verse Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta prayachchati. Tadaham bhaktya prahitam asnami prayatatmanaha. Krishna tells, if with love and devotion one offers to me even a single leaf, a piece of fruit, or some water or a flower, I will accept it. In the Brahma Sutra, it is said, Ananda Mayo Pyashat, that there is one common quality every living being has. We are all seeking pleasure. According to the gunas or our karmas and our natures, we're looking for pleasure in different things. A deer finds pleasure in eating grass. A tiger finds pleasure in eating the deer. So they're very different states of consciousness. Some people are looking for pleasure in giving charity. Other people are looking for pleasure in robbing banks. <laughs> Some people in perpetuating the ego and others in seeking shelter of God. But everyone's looking for pleasure. And the only thing that actually gives pleasure to the heart is love. Things cannot give pleasure to the heart. Money, fame, power, skills, they give some pleasure to the mind and to the senses, but the heart is yearning to love and to be loved. And what is the origin of that nature? According to the Gita, the great scriptures throughout the world, it is the very nature of the living force, the soul, the atma within us. To love God and to feel the unlimited love of God. That is what the heart is seeking in all of its adventures throughout this creation. But we've just forgotten where it's to be found and how to connect. So Krishna in this verse of Gita explains that we can realize Krishna's supreme love. We can, through offering our love, and we can offer that love 
in the simplest ways. Just by offering a leaf, a flower, a little water, or a fruit. Anyone could do that. You don't need a PhD. You don't need a lots of money in your bank account. Every human being can do that. And just by doing that, we can attain the greatest treasure and the perfection of life. <laughs> Hare. You see, all of these monks who are running the sound system, they all have big, big degrees in engineering. <laughs> so you just don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> but that means, even if you have a PhD and you're a billionaire, still you can offer a leaf of flower or water with love and attain the same perfection. There are countless examples of this principle in our great scriptures. Today's festival is a festival by which we are all having the opportunity to offer that flower of our love to Radha and Krishna. How many of you were here this morning during the plucking of the flowers? Please raise your hands. It doesn't take a big education. But what many of you may not know is that sitting around the same little basket, just pulling a petal off a flower, and then another until the flower doesn't have petals anymore. There were little children. There were their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents. There were men, there were women. There were people from uh, in all different castes, all different regions of India. People from America, from Europe, from Australia, from Ukraine, Russia. There were people, many people here with PhDs in science and engineering and philosophy. And there were people who have no education at all. Can't even write their name. They may be simple farmers. They were all sitting around the same little circles together, plucking flowers. There was millionaires. Sometimes we have billionaires with people who just you know, very, very simple villagers sitting beside each other, plucking flowers. Who's more qualified and who's less qualified? But if it's done in a spirit, and this was the meditation, that each and every one of these flower petals are going to be offered to Krishna. Each flower petal is my personal offering, one after another, of my love. You see, in the school of bhakti, this world is a divine um, arrangement to exchange love. We were speaking about this last night. Our very beloved, dear brother, Shamdasji, had just passed away and we went to his last rites yesterday in the area of Brindavan in a place called Surabi Kund at Govardhan. The physical body, is it maya? Is it illusion? Is this world just an illusion? In the path of bhakti, it's real. The illusion is our misconception of it. When we think, I am this body, that's an illusion. 
because we are the immortal soul. But this body is created by God's energy. The body doesn't die, it just gets transformed. And the soul doesn't die, it just goes somewhere else. So what is death? Death is just when the soul departs from one body to go to another place. It's a transition. Why even saintly people cry when the body dies of a loved one? You see, there's the pain of tears in illusion, and there's the pain of tears in truth. They may look the same, but they're coming from a completely different part of the heart. They're coming from a different realization. The pain of the tears when we're in illusion is we're thinking, I am this body, I am this mind, and this person is this body and mind, and now they're gone. And, they're, and death is something so final, they're gone forever. It's a void. It's a tragic loss. They no longer exist. But sorrow in truth is to understand that I am an eternal part of God. And my loved one who has passed from this world is immortal. And if they're good people, they're being elevated. And if they're self-realized people, they're going back to that pure liberated position of, of, of the pastimes of the Lord. But the body is a sacred medium by which we can exchange. We can speak to each other. We can, we, the body is a medium by which we can share our affection. We can share our affection to God together. We can share our compassion to people of this world together. And therefore it's sacred. We could inspire one another. And now that medium is gone. So in certain ways, it's more painful to the heart because there's such a higher purpose of the love that we have for each other. But the difference is that pain is actually an ananda. It's an ecstasy. It's a way of celebrating, offering our gratitude and our love to that departed soul. And the tears that flow in that consciousness are like pure water that nourishes the flower of our relationship with that immortal soul, of our connection. And in the same way, in a similar way, the things of this world, they're always changing, always under the influence of time. But with each moment, we have the opportunity to express our love for Krishna, for Ram, for God to reciprocate with, with, with the Lord's love. The flowers that grow. How long does a flower live? And when you pluck a flower petal, how long does it last? But that one little flower petal, for that, for that moment that you offer it to Krishna with love, can actually open the doors to the highest perfection of self-realization to you. To offer that flower petal with love, according to the Gita, yogi nama pisara vesham madkatena antaratmana shradhavan bhajateya mam samayyokta damata It's the perfection of samadhi. It's the highest yoga. To just render that service. 
So everything in this world, our body, our mind, our intelligence, our skills, our wealth, the fruits, the flowers, the metals, the, the bricks, whatever it may be, it's a facility to, to reciprocate love. And then we actually find the fulfillment that we're all truly seeking. So hundreds and hundreds of people were plucking flowers today for so many hours. And as we said, every kind of people, we were all equal. It's not that the flower petal off that was plucked by the billionaire is better than the simple villager. It's not that the flower petal plucked by the simple villager is better than the billionaire. It's not that the flower petal by the IIT engineer, PhD, who are here, is better than the person, you know, I mean, I only have one semester of junior college that I... <laughs> what gives the flower petal value is not our qualifications or not disqualifications. It's not a matter of whether we're male or female or black or white or red or yellow or brown or any other color. It's the sincerity of our devotion. And we've all taken those flower petals, which is a meditation. I, I, will, I wanted to tell you this while you were plucking this morning, but I was in Vrindavan. <laughs> As your Krishna, I'm offering you my heart. I'm offering you my intent to please you, to serve you. I'm offering you my intent to be an instrument of your grace in this world as I offer you this flower petal. And then all the flower petal gets missed in a basket with so many other people's flower petals. And then those baskets are going to get mixed with all the other baskets. How many pounds or tons of flowers? There, there was one ton of flower petals. That's 2,000 pounds or kilos? Huh? 2,000 pounds. Anyways, 1,000 kilos. So they're all merged. And I'm wondering if you're going to say, oh, that was my flower petal. <laughs> you won't even know which one was yours and which one was anybody's. Because this is a sense of oneness in bhakti. Our hearts become one when we share that same purpose of loving seva. Our hearts become one in that spirit. And the collective devotion of so many people is the offering that is being made. Hundreds, thousands of people's love, their devotion. That's the idea of Sankirtan. Sankirtan means together we are chanting God's names. There's japa, where we chant privately. There's bhajan, which may be just individually or with some others. But sankirtan means when many people are coming together, where our hearts become one in the unity of our intent, to give, to surrender to God's names, to offer our love through the chanting of the Lord's names. Lord Chaitanya taught that the perfect kirtan is like the offering of the flower petal. Every syllable of every name is an offering of our gratitude to Krishna, to Radha, to Ram, to Sita, for everything that they've given me and for, for, for being the ultimate, supremely beautiful object of my love. 
in all circumstances. And when we all chant together very sincerely with that intent, what a beautiful offering it is. So kirtan is a pushyapi shake. It's an offering of our joint flowers of love. And even if you didn't pluck any flower petals, your kirtan is offering a shower of devotion. It is so simple. My beloved Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, he would say that bhakti is simple for the simple and complicated for the complicated. My father and mother, when they first came to India, you know what changed their hearts more than anything else? I gave them so many lectures. And that just made them more worried about what I was doing. <laughs> they politely listened, but thought, oh, God. And I stopped giving them lectures. And I was just nice to them. And then they said, oh, this is very nice what you're doing. <laughs> And then they came to India. And they met people, people like the Muffet Lal and Desai family, who are actually very, extremely successful in this world. But they were so simple at heart. They weren't egoistic. Even though they had a lot of power and wealth and all of that, they were serving with such a desire to please, with such simple, pure hearts. That's what actually connects to us. We can impress people by our abilities, by our skills, by our strength, by our beauty. But that doesn't really touch people's hearts deep. It's the simplicity of the affection and character and the care that we have that actually deeply moves people. Why is that? Because patram pushpam palam toyam, that's what moves Krishna. That's what moves Bhagavan that simple offering of affection with a sincere desire to serve and to please. In Ramayan, Lord Sri Ram, he is the supreme personality of God, the absolute truth, who had descended as an avatar into this world, kind of playing the role like a human being. And as he was searching for his divine consort, Sita, along with Lakshman, his brother, they came to a lake in South India. It's still there today. It's called Pampasrovar. Please raise your hand if you have been to Pampasrovar. Just close to it is the birthplace of Hanuman, Kishkindakshetra. On the banks of Pampasrova, it's still there today, and the cave where this one lady was living is still there. Someday when we have more time, I'd like to tell you the fuller story. But we got there at night, and we've been reading about it, and we've been, I gave a whole lecture about it, and everyone was so eager to bathe in Pampasrova because it has such an incredible history. It was dark. And we went to take our bath in it, and one of the local people said, there are crocodiles, man-eating crocodiles, in this lake. We came all the way. And they said they especially come out at night. <laughs> we couldn't see. There was hardly any moon that night. But because we just you know, gave the lecture and heard the lecture about the, the glories of this holy place, we were so excited when they said there's crocodiles. Fools rush in. 
whatever you may interpret it. I said, well, I don't know about any of you, but I'm going in. And uh, I'm, uh, if we go in and we know those crocodiles are there, then we're going to really take a very um, serious bath while taking shelter of the Lord. It's not going to be a ritualistic bath. So we all went in. And we couldn't see if anybody was eat, getting eaten by crocodiles or not because we, it was dark. But anyways, somehow the crocodiles were very nice that day. <laughs> but on the banks of that lake is the cave where Shabri lived. Ram met her. She was very old. By social standards in India, she was an outcast. She had absolutely no literacy, education. She was very poor, lived in the jungle. But she connected with her guru named Matanga Rishi. And he had many sages there. And she lived among them. And at a certain point, Matanga Rishi and all of his followers decided, it's time for us to go to Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. So they said, Shabri, you haven't yet your practice of yoga, your practice of gyan, your practice of bhakti is still so incomplete. The only way you can join us is through grace. And Ram and Lakshman, because Matangarishi could re see the future, they will come here after some years. When you serve them and please them and they shower their grace upon you, then you will become spiritually enlightened. You will perfect your self-realization and be fit for this highest liberation. So they all left. And she was alone, waiting, waiting, and waiting. Every moment she was just, will Ram come? Will Ram? <laughs> that lolyam, that sense of eagerness, completely purified her. And when Ram did come, you know, she's in the middle of this jungle. She wanted to offer him something. But what is there to offer? She gathered whatever little fruits and berries she could get. And she offered them to Ram with her heart. And for Ram, it was a glorious feast because she was offering it with such an intent of love to please him. And just by offering those fruits in that state of yoga, bhakti, Ram granted her the supreme perfection. By his grace, he enlightened her heart fully and she returned to the spiritual world. There's a similar story in Krishna's pastimes. When Krishna was just a little boy, he was about three years old. And in those days there wasn't currency. This is 5,000 years ago. He used to see his mother barter by giving some grains that they would grow in their fields to buy something. So th this lady came from the forest. Simple lady, just lived in the jungle. And she just picked some fruits in the forest. She had a little hut where she would store them. And she came into the village Krishna was living, Gokul. And she cried out, does anyone want to buy fruits? Does anyone want to buy fruits? And little Gopal, he he just grabbed a handful of grains and was so excited to get fruits. He was running, 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 and as he was running, the fruits were coming because he was just a little child. And his hand was so small and so soft. And the, the grains were falling from between his fingers and falling from the sides of his hand. And he ran up to the fruit vendor and said, here, give me fruit. And she looked and there was like one or two grains of wheat. What is the value? But as she looked at Gopal, 
He was so beautiful. The grace that was pouring from his loving eyes upon her melted her heart. She just wanted to please him. That's all. That was her only goal in life right now, was just to make this child happy, to make this child smile. And she said, I'll give you as many fruits as you can hold. And little Gopal put his hands, his arms up, and she filled his arms with fruits. And they were like a little mountain of fruits. And he ran home so happy, he smiled at her. That smile of Krishna was the greatest wealth of her life. You know what happened? Because this very, very poor little lady in the jungle gave those fruits to Krishna, her basket filled up, overflowing with pure diamonds, emeralds, rubies, lapis lazuli, gold, silver, pure pearls, like they used to be. <laughs> but she didn't even notice it. She got so much happiness making Krishna happy. The only thing in her mind was, I have to get more fruits, and I have to give him more. <laughs> so she picked up her basket and went and ran back into the forest. And she didn't even notice that her basket was so heavy. This is her enthusiasm. And she picked so many more fruits. And when she went to put it in the basket, she saw that her basket was filled with all these precious jewels. And you know what she did? She just dumped them out. They were an obstacle to her. She just dumped them all out and filled the basket and ran back for Krishna. There's such a paramdrasvanivartate, such a higher taste in pleasing God than anything we can possibly acquire in life. Greed acquisitions of material things, it's like fire. The more you feed it, it just, the more it needs. So she ran back with her basket of fruits and she ran to Krishna's house and said, Go, Paul, go, Paul, I have more for you. And he came running out and he was smiling even more and more and more. And that was the perfection of her life. She attained prema. Param Mukti, the Supreme Mukti she attained, just by offering those fruits without expecting anything in return. She just wanted to please. And Krishna, he went to his mother, Yashoda, and said, I have all these fruits. Look at all these fruits I got. She said, where did you get these fruits? She said, a lady from the jungle came and, and I bought them. <laughs> And she said, Krish, Gopal, you know, not everybody's like your parents and your family at home. You can't just go out and trust everybody that you don't know. And you know what Gopal's answer was? Mother, I don't know what you mean. What does it mean to not trust somebody? She said, I want these fruits to be given to all my friends and all my relatives and everybody I love. Will you come and, and give these fruits out with me? In other words, the love of his devotee, each fruit was saturated with the love of this lady. He wanted to share the lo that love with everyone. So he started putting all the fruits in the, the cloth that his mother was um, wearing, and she went out into the village and s started giving out the fruits. Now, there was only about 20 fruits she gave out dozens, she gave out hundreds, she gave out thousands of fruits. And she was amazed. How is it that the, I'm, there's, there's only a few here and I'm giving them out, but there's still more here. That is Krishna. Achintya Shakti. The Lord has unlimited capacity to share his love. And even sweeter than that, 
he has unlimited capacity to share the love of his devotees. The secret of all secrets, according to Gita, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam, is how the all-powerful controller of all controllers is overpowered and controlled by the love of his devotee. Whether it's a simple fruit seller, whether it's shabari, in Lord Chaitanya's Leela there was Sridhar. He would sell banana leaves and sometimes even had some bananas to sell. And every day Krishna or Ram appeared in this age of Kali as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he also played the role of, a, of just a little boy. They thought he was just a little boy. And he would go to Sridhar every day and ask, what is the price of your bananas? And Sridhar, he was so generous. He would sell his bananas for the cheapest possible price, just to get by. And he would give the price. And Nehemiah would say, I will give you half. Sridhar said, I can't do that. He said, I'll, then, I will, then I'll just take them for nothing. Every day, Nimai would go to Sridhar and argue the price of bananas for two to three hours. This was an exchange of love. <laughs> and Sridhar would sit on the ground just all day just waiting for Nimai to come to argue with him. He didn't know he was God, but so much love, so much devotion, so much ecstasy, just thinking of Nimai, what to speak of seeing Nimai, what to speak of arguing with Nimai. Sridhar was so poor, one day Nimai said to him, Nimai is the name of Lord Chaitanya, because he was born under a neem tree. He said, why do you worship Krishna? Why are you always chanting Krishna's names? What has Krishna done for you? Look at your clothes. They're so old and they have so many holes in them and you just tie knots to put them together. And you're so skinny and your house, your house is just a straw hut with one room and there's no furniture. What is Krishna doing for you? You're doing everything for him. And Sridhar blissfully said, in my life I have learned that a king is living in a great palace with wonderful clothes and ornaments and eating the finest foods. And a bird is living in a little straw nest and he wears the same old feathers every day and he just eats some seeds. But as far as I could see, they're both passing their lives in the same way. I really see little difference. I'm happy chanting Krishna's names. I don't need anything else. I'm happy pleasing Krishna. And Nimai said, you are the wealthiest man on earth, but you're hiding your treasure. And someday I am going to reveal it to the world. And years and years later, Sri Chaitanya revealed himself as Krishna, as Ram, as the avatar. And one day he was giving any benediction to all people who came before him. And he called Sridhar. And he revealed his form of Krishna to Sridhar. In fact, because of the flower festival, all these paintings are covered with plastic. But tomorrow, if you come, you'll see painting of this pastime I'm speaking. And Lord Chaitanya said to Sridhar, I will give you anything you like. Sridhar said, I don't want anything. The Lord said, you're so poor. I will give you a kingdom. I will give you a palace. I will give you a whole country. Anything you want. Sridhar said, I don't want that. 
Nimai said, I'll give you all the eight mystic cities. Well, you could perform miracles, anima, mahima, prapti. You could become big, you could become small, you could create anything you want with the chanting of a mantra. You could travel to the sun by just jumping on a sun ray. You can, you can materialize or dematerialize yourself. You could read people's minds, you could control the world, you could control planets. I could give you all these mystic cities in full. Take it! Sridhar said, that will just be a disturbance to me. I don't want. I'll give you mukti! I'll give you liberation! No more suffering ever again! He said, I don't want mukti. The Lord said, ask something! Sridhar said, please don't be disturbed. I don't want anything. I'm happy as I am. The Lord said, I'm not disturbed. <laughs> and Sridhar said, I, I'm happy just pleasing you. And the Lord said, I'll be pleased if you ask for something. <laughs> he said, all right, if it really pleases you that I ask for something. The Lord said, I will give you elevation to Goloka Vrindavan, the spiritual world, to enter into my eternal pastimes. Ask something! He said, I ask one thing. Let me never forget in the core of my heart that little boy Nimai coming to steal my bananas. And birth after birth after birth, please just come and steal my bananas. That's all I want. Lord Chaitanya began to cry. He confessed in front of everyone, I am conquered by this devotee. And you know, every day Lord Chaitanya would not eat a meal if it was not from a banana leaf that was given by Sridhar. And in this way he revealed the treasure. At the same time we find great, great kings, emperors, professionals who conquer the Lord by utilizing what they have with this simple spirit of devotion. So that is what we are celebrating today. Celebrating this grace which is available for everyone, everywhere, at all times. There is no disqualification, there is no qualification. All that is required is that sincerity of the heart. It's a celebration of the opportunity we all have. It's a celebration of Krishna's grace, that he's so totally accessible to everyone through devotion and how he is con conquered by devotion. So in our chanting, we are offering the flowers of our affection, of our gratitude, of our intent to love. In our watching the beautiful forms of the Lord who have so lovingly appeared before us to accept our services. As we see them being showered by the love of their devotees, sometimes they may even get kind of buried by the love of their devotees in these soft, gentle flowers. That's our happiness. To be happy seeing that, to be happy seeing Krishna accepting our love 
is such an intimate form of yoga. And it's so purifying to our very hearts. And these flowers are from all over India. All the roses are from Vrindavan, grown by the Brijavasis. And where else are the flowers coming from? From South India, the jasmines and other fragrant flowers. And so many flowers from our eco-village. Many of you will be going there with us on Monday. So at this time, let us be in the mood of a meditation, a meditation of devotion. Finding joy in seeing the flowers of the devotee's love, the combined love of everyone being offered to Krishna and singing singing very, very joyfully. Thank you very much.